Welcome. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is our pastor, Father David Ryan. Deacons of the Mass are John Sapphire and our newest deacon, Tom Pertell.
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. And peace to those who uh, uh, join us to the wonders of uh, live streaming. And uh, as we gather here this evening, uh, it's Tom Pertell, Deacon Tom Pertell, after four years of uh, spiritual formation, activity formation, pastoral formation, leadership formation, uh, celebrating with us within his parish. He and Jocelyn are longtime members of this parish. Their children went to our outstanding Blue Ribbon Parish School and uh, up to Carmel Catholic High School and colleges. And, but Tom and Jocelyn have been so involved in the parish over the years. And Tom has a leadership role in our pastoral council as well as I rely upon him for advice. Uh, in our parish. But uh, this evening is his first time deaconing at a Mass. Uh, you've seen him up here these past four years, maybe as a lector, maybe as a Eucharistic minister, uh, assisting at the altar, uh, but not as a deacon. So a couple of Sundays ago, uh, Bishop Manns uh, called forth the Holy Spirit upon him, and uh, he was ordained a clergy deacon uh, in our church and the uh, and in our parish. So this is a great night to celebrate uh, Tom's relationship with Jesus Christ, his love of family, his devotedness to this parish as we gather here to celebrate this uh, Saturday Vigil Mass. But to Tom Bertel, congratulations. And as you've learned over the past couple of years, he's an outstanding preacher as well. And we'll leave it up to Tom to introduce his brother deacons and priests who join him uh, at the altar this evening. So let us turn to each other as brothers, as sisters, by the waters of our baptism, and greet each other in goodwill. Greetings to you, Tom, once again. Greetings to all of you at home, particularly those of you who are related to Tom as family, extended family, or, or friends. Uh, the, the wonders of fiber optics, our live streaming since March, has brought so many of us closer together. Maybe separated by geography or distance, but we're never distant from Jesus Christ. Uh, what can distance us from Jesus is sin. Sin is not good for our spirit. Health. Sin can distort our relationship with Jesus, and it can harm our relationship with one another. So whatever burden of sin we may have carried into uh, this house of our Father this evening, Jesus does not want us to be burdened with sin. He died upon the cross for the forgiveness of sin. So in the quiet reflection of our own soul, let's unburden of any sin. And, heal, and feel, hopefully actually feel, the healing touch of Jesus upon you. And Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus forgives us. Jesus heals us. And he calls for you and I to heal and forgive one another. And let us pray on this 24th Sunday in our ordinary time. Look upon us, O Lord, creator and ruler and guide of all things in our life, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Now, if you brought your Bible with you, which I hope you did bring your Bible with you, or if you have the uh, uh, app on your phone to uh, read along, follow along, discern along the words of the Scripture this evening, I encourage you always bring your Bible with you to church. Tonight's first reading is from the book of Sirach. Chapter 27, verse 30 through chapter 28, verse 7. 
Again, it's Sirach chapter 27, verse 30 through 28, verse 7. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember, your last days sent enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we proclaim Psalm 103. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, rich in kindness. second reading this evening is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 4, sorry, 14, verses 7 through 9. Again, Romans 14, 7 through 9. A reading from the letter of St. Paul, then, to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live 
we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through 25. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, Not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had his fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight we have a number of VIPs with us, uh, but I'm going to get to that a little bit later before we dismiss everybody with some thank yous. Uh, You can see there's a couple sitting over here in the center section. A number of gentlemen over here, but we'll introduce those before we dismiss people. Now, as Father Ryan mentioned, many of you have heard me offer reflections or a homily here at St. Francis de Sales before, and usually I'm not very nervous when I'm up here at the Ambo speaking. Call it the Holy Spirit, I'm not sure what it is. I may be a little bit anxious once in a while to make sure that I really do a good job but never really nervous. But today, to be totally honest with you, I am truly nervous. Not because I'm preaching for the first time as a deacon in front of the congregation, or in front of my classmates, or some very experienced priests and deacons, all of whom are unbelievably good homilists. 
No, I'm nervous because of one person who's with us in church today, and that's my mom sitting in the front row. Now, my mother has heard me preach a number of homilies, and at this point, I don't even have to ask for her feedback anymore. She freely gives it. She almost always says, Thomas, your homily was fine, but you're no Father Ryan. <laughs> then she'd go on to say, at least you wore dark socks and your shoes were polished. So Mom and the rest of you here in church this evening and joining us via live stream, if I'm not on this evening, if my homily isn't very good, I ask for your forgiveness. And I'd ask that you remember today's gospel when Peter asked Jesus if it's enough to forgive someone seven times. And Jesus says that's not good enough. You have to forgive them 77 times. And in some translations of the Bible, it's 70 times 7. It's 490 times. So I'm asking for a lot of forgiveness this evening. Today's gospel message is pretty straightforward. It's about mercy and forgiveness. And as I was preparing for this homily, I started reflecting on the theme of forgiveness. And I was thinking there has to be a lot of people in the world who are in need of forgiveness. So my curiosity got the best of me, and I went out on the internet, I did a few Google searches, looking for public people who were in need of forgiveness. And wow, was I surprised at how many people in the public eye are in need of forgiveness. Even some of the websites, the authors of the websites that I visited, they're in a lot of need of forgiveness as well. But I seemed to focus in on four people that kept appearing. And the names are Osama, Saddam, Bill, and Jerry. So we'll start with Osama. Now, everyone would agree that Osama bin Laden did some terrible things, very unforgivable things. And yesterday was September 11th a day that we took out time out to honor those who were killed in the attack in the World Trade Center. We stopped to remember all those who died in New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, and all those innocent people who, and still are, impacted by some way those attacks. And I thought about bin Laden's role in the 98 embassy bombings in Africa. And it seemed to me that it would take some really special type of radical forgiveness to forgive the likes of Osama and Saddam. So on to Bill and Jerry. Now you might ask yourselves right now, which Bill and Jerry is he going to talk about? Well, of course, I'm talking about Bill Buckner and Jerry Krause. It seems like fans let alone Red Sox fans, have a difficult time forgiving Bill Buckner for what happened in the 86 World Series. And I'm not sure it's possible for the Bulls fans to ever forgive Jerry Krause. It'll take some radical forgiveness to forgive these two individuals as well. Now, it's important to recognize that these are public people and that we probably don't have much of a personal connection with them. We probably don't think of them every day. And we're probably not expending a lot of personal thought capital on forgiving them. And I think that's okay. For most of us, we probably are best off starting with forgiving those who are close to us. In many ways, I think that's the real message in today's readings. It's directed at us more personally, at our soul, how we live our life, how we hold on to resentment how we hold on to anger, and how we forgive. It occurred to me that forgiveness is probably the most demanding expression of love that there is in the world. And our inability to forgive can tear at the fabric of our identity, occupy our thoughts and feelings, and damage relationships and ruin friendships. Our readings today are very clear that we need to forgive one another. The gospel is very clear that there is no room in the heavenly kingdom for those who cannot find it in their heart to forgive people over and over again. 
In the first reading from Sirach, the words seem to fit our world today perfectly. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. We should take to heart the words, Forgive your neighbor's injustice, and your own sins will be forgiven. Today's gospel gives us the wonderful parable of the unforgiving servant. It does a great job depicting mercy and forgiveness, and the dynamic between forgiving and being forgiven. In the end, Jesus says, Forgive others and you will be forgiven. With the words, So so will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. And Jesus knew a lot about forgiveness. When Jesus stepped into the waters of the Jordan to be baptized, he wasn't in need of redemption and repentance. He did so to be among people who needed forgiveness. The words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Our Father, includes, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And when Jesus was being crucified, he prayed for his executioners, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And let's not forget that Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, a debt that we will never be able to repay. And these are just a few examples of Jesus' great love to us and his ability to forgive. And as our great cantor Lisa sang a few minutes ago, the Lord is kind and merciful, and his love knows no limits. So what does he ask of us? What does he expect of us? He asks us to reflect his love, mercy, and forgiveness to others. And here's the big question for us today. How do we live out this call to forgive in real life? How do we do this when we are personally locked up in anger with someone or it's impossible to forgive them? What do we do? And I'd like to suggest that we need to think like Jesus thought. See, Jesus saw people differently than the way we often see people especially those we find very difficult to forgive. Jesus was able to see beyond what we typically see. For example, Jesus saw Peter not just as a simple fisherman from a small village. Jesus saw him as a person with the potential to lead a church. When Jesus meets up with Zacchaeus, he doesn't see a sinful tax collector. Jesus sees someone seeking redemption. And when Jesus sees the woman caught in adultery, he doesn't just see her sin. Jesus sees a person in need of forgiveness. So we need to see people as Jesus would see them. We need to look beyond the surface, beyond what most people see to find the goodness and the potential in everyone. This will help us to see beyond the sins and forgive. And... When we're able to forgive from the heart, there's an added benefit. Forgiveness also has a certain healing power, both for the person granting forgiveness and the one being forgiven. To take a line from Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, forgiveness is twice blessed. The one who forgives is blessed, oftentimes with a new beginning, and the one who receives forgiveness is blessed as well, oftentimes transformed and healed. So today, let's find it in our hearts to forgive those who are close to us, those who have sinned against us, as the gospel says, and let's make amends, for life is way too short not to. And let's remember to cut Bill Buckner and Jerry Krause a break. Pray together these 
beliefs that we share in the waters of our baptism and our discipleship in Jesus, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, was buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. We turn to our Father to offer these prayers in petition. And first, a prayer of gratitude and thanksgiving of Tom Pertel's four-year journey of uh, answering that call, that push by the Holy Spirit, in support of his family, his ordination in, as a deacon in service to the people of God in this parish, in the body of Christ. In gratitude, Jesus, thank you. We pray to the Lord. We are thankful that Tom Pertel's deacon now joins uh, Deacon Bob Arvidson and Deacon John Sapphire and Deacon George Flaherty in service to this parish uh, and bringing about and building up the body of Christ with their gifts of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we offer a prayer of gratitude for his mother and for his father. But in gratitude to his mother for the faith formation of her son in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mother. We pray to the Lord. Lord we want to keep in, uh, also a prayer of, uh, in gratitude uh, for all the generosity and the compassion of this good parish and community, for our food pantry and the ministry center through St. Vincent de Paul. Those blue bins are filled and refilled uh, week in and week out by so many of you and by fellow neighbors in our communities and by stores in our communities. Uh, under the leadership of George uh, Stewart and with Kathleen Murray and uh, Stan and Gail, who I see are here, and the O'Leary's. I mean, so many people step forward to volunteer their time uh, in our food pantry, especially since March, uh, when the great uh, sheltering in began. That did not deter those volunteers in our food pantry of showing up uh, every week, and especially on Thursday, and providing uh, uh, boxes of food to those in need. Uh, and to Mr. Jerry and Mr. Chris for their help uh, in the uh, food pantry efforts as well. Since March 15th, 2,911 families have come to the front door of our ministry center uh, to receive boxes of food, produce, uh, milk, and meat for their families in their home. Uh, in this corporal work of charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We have a number of people that we need to offer in prayer who are facing health challenges. Uh, Kyle Tucky, uh, Dave and Sue Tucky's son, uh, he had surgery, brain surgery, uh, this past week uh, at, Northwestern Ho at Northwest Community Hospital. So we want to keep Kyle Tucky in prayer. Kyle, the young man, on Friday, when he can, he plays that piano for our Friday noon mass. In the past, he played in our youth ministry masses on Sunday evenings. And uh, so we want to keep a helpful recovery for Kyle. We pray to the Lord. We want to keep a prayer for Karen Jersick for her husband Thad, who is facing a serious health challenge. As you know, Karen's one of our outstanding team in the ministry center. Her husband's been fighting this cancer for a while, so we want to keep Thad and Karen and their family uh, in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Emily Baker, young uh, mother, uh, also facing a severe health challenge. She'll be undergoing uh, surgery uh, next week. Uh, she has two young children. She was here today for the anointing of the sick. So for Emily Baker, God love her, uh, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We want to keep a prayer for Marie Galdoni. The health challenge has come her way. She is at Northwestern Hospital. She'll be there for three months. 
she too is fighting a cancer. And uh, so we want to keep her in prayer, the knowledge of medicine that is dealing with this cancer in her life, for her husband Peter, for their four sons, for the many friends uh, around them, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We also want to keep in prayer Laura Angelini, another outstanding team player in our ministry center, in the business office. On Wednesday night, she was involved in a very serious auto accident on the Old McHenry Road, a distracted driver. Uh, plowed into her and caused a terrible accident. Laura is seriously hurt. Uh, she is at good. She is at Good Shepherd Hospital. She'll be there a while. Surgery is pending. She is in pain. Uh, so keep her in a prayer uh, during this time of challenge for her. We keep a prayer for her husband Lou and for her daughter Allison and for their son Nick who is in service to the United States Army. So Laura is another one of the outstanding parishioners, does outstanding work for us in the ministry center, participates in our mission in developing this body of Christ. So for Laura, healthful recovery, it's going to take some time. We pray to the Lord. Lord Even prayer, another one, our Kurt uh, Paulus. Steve and Dave's brother. He too is fighting a cancer. He had a rough week last week. So we want to keep him in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the soul of uh, Thomas and Patricia Klett, we pray to the Lord. Lord. We also want to keep in prayer the soul of Larry Taylor. For those of you who know the Wellborn, this is Kim's father. For his soul, we pray to the Lord. We want to keep in prayer also the soul of Ray Breefield, Jean's father. Now, Jean in our parish, her mother and father both now have gone into the light within a year's time. And Ray uh, just died uh, this past week. God rest his soul. We pray to the Lord. And for the soul of Kimberly Penaway, 62 years old, fought ALS the last couple of years. Outstanding woman. Uh, but for her good soul, we pray to the Lord. And now, in the quietness of our own good hearts, we offer our own special intention. Whatever it is we carry to the Lord in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you that we're able to gather here to celebrate this evening with a good family and Tom Pertel as deacon. We continue our prayers for those who have died because of this pandemic uh, or, or because of complication of health issues due to this COVID-19 virus. We continue our prayers for our scientists and our researchers to develop a vaccine. And we continue to listen to the words of Dr. Fauci and those in the CDC guiding us uh, in this health challenge that's come our way and throughout the world. In Jesus, we place our trust in you. Amen. Bless Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, you this bread to offer, the earth is given, human hands have made, come for us, bread of life. And bless Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, you this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, to come for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my inequities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, brothers, pray, sisters, that our sacrifice acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look with favor on us, our prayers, Jesus, and in your kindness accept these, your servants, offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name 
may it serve the salvation of all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Well, it's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. Just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. So of all those angels and all those saints, we too acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Mr. Jerry's wife, Myrna, she had back surgery two weeks ago, and she's at home recovering. But Mr. Jerry, as you know, one of our outstanding custodians, maintenance, takes care of our buildings and the church and our, our grounds and puts up things, takes down things for meetings. He's always there when you need him. Well, he's on FMLA for a while taking care of his wife. So keep Myrna Perez and Mr. Jerry in prayer as well. You're indeed holy, O Lord, fountain of all holiness. May call you therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was in, it took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, o Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving chalice. Thank you, counting us worthy to be in your presence, minister to you. Father, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered as one in the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, all the clergy, but especially the people. And remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. For the names that we have invoked tonight, God rest their soul. And for those who have died because of this pandemic, families in mourning, God rest their soul. And have mercy, Lord. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, beloved spouse Joseph, the blessed apostles and all the saints, St. Francis de Sales, patron saint of this good parish, with the good people in this parish. And St. Francis de Sales is there for all the communities that surround this altar. And all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit, co-heirs, eternal life, praise, glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us 
stand together as brothers and sisters by the waters of our baptism, as disciples in Jesus, and pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil and the evil one. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of the church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance to your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. God bless you. Thank you. For Holy Communion, as you are familiar, the, the ushers will come down the aisle. There will be an usher here on St. Joseph's side with the hand sanitizer. Usher here with the aisle with the pews in front of the altar. And an usher over here by the Blessed Mother's side. As the usher stands in front of your particular pew, then you may come out to receive uh, the real presence of Jesus. Please keep your mask as you approach to receive communion. As you know, there is the one option in receiving communion, and that is in the hand. So please make that reverent, respectful, kind of a crown position with the palm of your hand, and then either myself, or Deacon Tom, or Deacon John, you'll hear the words, Body of Christ. Place the real presence in your hand, and as you know, you respond with, Amen, I believe, or, so be it. And then if you're on the St. Joseph side, you move to the end of the, of the uh, first pew here. If you're in the center pews, you move to the, the altar area. If you're on the Blessed Mother side, you move to the end of the first pew. And then in common sense, you lower your mask. And then you do what Jesus instructed us to do. Take and eat his body. Profound when you ponder that words of Jesus and who is it that we are receiving. It is never a matter of routine to receive the real presence, to take and eat the body of Christ. And then return to your pew for quiet uh, communion reflection. <laughs> God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Deacon John will be over here on the St. Joseph side of the church. Deacon Tom will be here in the center of the church, and I'll be over by the Blessed Mother.
I'd like to take just a couple of minutes to thank some of the people who have played a very important role in my vocation journey. First, Father Ryan, thank you for your support and your guidance as I move towards the diaconate. I can't begin to tell you how much I appreciate your signing off on all my internship projects, my papers, and filling out all those forms from the seminary. Thank you. And I can't think of a better parish to be assigned to. I'd also like to thank our deacons, Deacon Bob Arvidson and his wife, Sue, George Flaherty, Deacon George Flaherty and his wife, Tony, and Deacon John Sapphire and his wife, Bobby. Just like Father Ryan, Jocelyn and I can't thank you enough for your support, your guidance, and your prayers over these past four years. And to all the staff and parishioners of St. Francis, our close friends, we thank you all for your kind words and prayers. We have great spirit here at St. Francis de Sales and a wonderful community, and it's with great humility that I serve this community as a deacon. Thank you. To my brothers and sisters from the class of 2020, uh, Brian Fisher and his wife Angie over here, and Brent Berkey, who is recently ordained a deacon. Brian's going to be ordained on September 26th. Brent was ordained on August 12th. Brent's wife is Cassie over here on this side. Sorry we separated you two. And um, uh, thanks to Deacon Jim Miner and his wife Nancy, who are the head of our theological reflection groups. You know, surely God was looking after both Jocelyn and me when he put all of you in our life. Thank you for your friendship, your support, and your prayers. You know, we're blessed today to have with us Father Dan Brady, right here in the middle of the parish, or middle of the, uh, the section. As you know, most of you know, my Uncle Tom was a priest in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and Father Brady was his classmate. They were ordained together in 1961, and they were also the best of friends. Father Brady's great stories of their time together, their travels, and tales of the Thursday Six really brought him close to our family, and he has been a blessing and a special gift. Father, thank you for making it here and being here today to celebrate with us. And a special thanks to my cousin Peter Breslin sitting over here for being here today. Doc Breslin, as he's called at Loyola University, has more letters after his name than I'll ever remember. But there are two that I will never forget, and that's S.J. And of all the Jesuit values that Cousin Peter reflects so well, men and women for and with others has had a major impact on my vocation. Thank you, Peter, for your love and support, and thank you for being here. To all the members of my family, my brother, sisters, sister-in-law, brothers-in-law, nieces, nephews, my mother-in-law, Joan, and Joe, who got caught in traffic and couldn't be here tonight, my mom, Betty, and her friend, Gil, thank you for journeying with Jocelyn and me these past four years, and thanks for the many prayers and your unwavering support. There are two gentlemen that are not here with us tonight, but they're here in spirit, and that's my dad and my Uncle Tom. I think of them most every day. I felt their gentle guiding hands over the past four years. And I thank the good Lord for their continued presence in my life. And to Joseph, Maggie, Anna, and little Oliver James, I don't know how else to say this, but quite simply, you are my life. All I can say is I love you and I thank you. And to Jocelyn, what a wonderful journey these past 35 plus years have been. And one of his most powerful and often used as we talked about messages, St. Paul told us that love is patient and kind. It's never envious or proud. It keeps no records of wrong, which is good when you're married to a guy like me. It's always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. Yes, love never fails. It's funny, but I don't know how he had you 
in mind when he wrote those words so many years ago, but clearly he did. All I can say is I love you and I thank you. so that its effects and not our own desires or designs, they always prevail in us. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So as you know, or at least I'll let you know once again, uh, when we depart, the ushers will once again return. And they will begin in the back row this time uh, by, the by the Blessed Mother, the center aisles in front of the altar, and the St. Joseph's aisles. And as they come to your aisle, beginning from the back, looking forward, then you may depart. Those who are sitting in the center, please go out the east doors of the church. Those on the Blessed Mother's side, please wait your turn, but also go out the east doors of the church. And those on the St. Joseph's side, please go out the west doors of the church. But as you're also familiar with, since March, the conclusion of our Mass, we turn to the flag of our country and make that Pledge of Allegiance once again. We're blessed to be American. We're blessed that we are in a republic, that we live under laws, uh, by our Constitution, by our Bill of Rights, the high hopes we have as a country and our Declaration of Independence as we strive to form that more perfect union. It is in God that we trust. It is the voice of Jesus that we listen to as his disciples. We don't place our trust in any one political party. We don't place our trust in any one politician's voice. We listen to the voice of Jesus, his teaching, his truth. But we're blessed to be able to live under this flag through, the, uh, through all those who have died in service to our country. They're all winners because they enable us to live as a free people. None of them are losers. None of them are suckers. They died in order for this country to live. So we make that pledge. Every generation has their challenges. That's why it's important for all of us to know our American history. We think we're being challenged. Read the American history. Every generation has been challenged. But it's how you and I as citizens face that challenge. Let us once again make that pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible liberty and justice for all. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, hold you, palm of his hand, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.